I'm going to show you how to use volatility in your favor to pick winning stocks. So have you ever wondered how much time it would take you to research a stock and rather than researching that stock, would you rather spend time doing something that you rather do, like being with your family, going on vacation? Have you ever wondered what it would be like to take great vacations using some of the proceeds from your profits? And have you ever wondered how it would feel like to make calm, unemotional trades, uh, particularly in today's market climate where everything is so uh, volatile, incredibly volatile? Well, would you like me to share how I do it, how I find winning stocks, and how I'm even profiting in today's volatile market. So in today's session, I'm going to take you through how to take control of your financial future and find the winning stocks and how to profit in the down market that we're in today. Uh, one of the key findings, too, uh, that I want you to discover is how to identify a loser before it destroys your portfolio and get it out of your portfolio or use it use the uh, downside to your advantage and trade an option on it so the secret to building a killer portfolio are the five steps and that's the secret that I'm going to that's the secret sauce I'm going to add today um, and just show you in the five simple steps that I use to find winning stocks and how simple it is to do the same i'm going to be using the chaken analytics platform um, and showing you actual examples from my portfolio, from stocks that I've traded in my portfolio. So what's our problem today? Well, the research shows that investors tend to run for the exits whenever the market drops, and that actually costs you 4% per year. Um, boy, that's a pretty staggering number because uh, right now there's a lot of people running for the exits because the market, as everyone knows, the S&P is down about 6% this year. So why should you listen to me? Well, the Wall Street Journal says that four out of five pros last year uh, underperformed the market. And my portfolio is outperforming the market, thus I'm outperforming four out of five pros. The S&P is down 6% this year, I'm up uh, 1%. I found the two best growth stocks in 2014, Skyworks, which was up 156% last year, and Southwest Air, which was up 126%. And I do this all in 15 minutes a day. And the other thing that uh, I want to share with you all is that I'm living proof that you don't have to be a financial expert to do this. I started investing in stocks in 2012 with the Chaken Power Gauge model, and I've been investing ever since. And before that, I was strictly in mutual funds, and I had my account managed by a portfolio manager because I didn't feel confident that I knew enough to trade stocks. I didn't feel confident I knew enough to trade mutual funds. But now I, I'm strictly in stocks. I hold about eight or ten stocks in my portfolio, and I make all the decisions on what to do with those. So why is the time now? Well, particularly in this volatile market, it's really critical to have a plan. And I know a lot of us get emotional about trading. They see a big downturn like that 1,000-day drop in the uh, Dow a couple of weeks ago or you know, the 400-point upside in yesterday's market, and it's just going all over the place, and people are scared, and they don't know what to do. And that's why having a plan is so critical right now, even more so now in this volatile time. Excuse me one sec there. So let me just step it back a minute and take you through how I became an investor in stocks and got to where, I'm, where I am right now with this killer portfolio. Well, I started investing in the 70s. I was in corporate America. Uh, I had a senior marketing roles at Elizabeth Arden, L'Oreal, the Franklin Mint. They all had uh, mutual uh, funds in their 401k plans. So I invested in those funds, which were primarily Fidelity and like Mason, which were doing great for a while. But then as my portfolio grew and I became more and more busy, I felt it was time to engage a professional. So um, at the uh, strong recommendation of, of some friends, I engaged a professional and he took all of the mutual funds that I w was in 
and sold them and then put me in about eight or ten mutual funds of his of his liking. Well, along comes 2008. Um, who doesn't remember 2008, right? My portfolio dropped 40 percent and that was like incredibly. <laughs> it was an incredible moment for me because uh, the pain of going through losing 40 percent uh, was just really incredible. I'd worked my whole career to build this portfolio up and then in you know in, in a matter of months it, it kind of disappeared in front of me. Uh, this was particularly painful because the lifestyle I had led growing up, which you're seeing here, uh, had been very privileged and when I was in college, uh, this all went away as well and I finished college on a scholarship. So the pain of all that coming back to me with um, the loss of my uh, 401k plan really put me in a quandary. So I really didn't know what to do. I always had felt that uh, or had been brought up to feel that you know if you need a professional plumber on a plumbing problem, you go to a plumber. So likewise, you know if you need a, uh, if you have a dental problem, you go to a dentist. If you have a money issue, you go to a professional. So obviously that didn't work out. So I didn't quite know what to do next, but I knew, I knew that I was not going to have another professional money manager. That I had to take control, and I resolved uh, right then and there that I was going to take control. And, and fortunately, it's worked out really well. And these are recent pictures from vacations we've taken, and the vacations were all paid for from the, by the profits that I've made uh, in my investing. So it, it's all worked out just fine, but it was a it was a painful road. But right now, and this this is really the crux of it, the, you know, financial control plus the confidence, and the confidence is so huge, and the lack of confidence is so debilitating. But having the confidence now that I can make these decisions and control my own financial future is enormous, and it translates into freedom. It translates into confidence in every area. Of my of my life, of my job, my personal relationships, it's uh, it's just pretty. Uh, it's just great. So, what are the challenges we're all facing? You know, what what do I hear so often as I as I'm presenting to investors? I hear they don't have a plan. I hear people are scared of the stock market. Uh, they've been burned before, like I have. They're scared to get back in. And I've also heard that people don't understand, uh, particularly women, all the jargon, and they're put off by it. A lot of people have lost a lot of money. Many of us still trade on emotion. You know, it means we buy at the wrong time and then we sell at the wrong time, which translates into losing money. And also, time's a factor. I mean, who who has enough time today to do everything you want to do? Um, I sure don't. So. The thought of, well, gee, you can invest in the stock market, but you've got to learn how to do it, is off-putting to many people because they think it's going to take an enormous amount of time and energy to, to get there. So um, who, what are some of the challenges facing, facing you all as investors today? Maybe if you could type into the chat box some of the challenges that you're facing and some of the um, reasons you give why you are, are frozen out. Okay, I see. Uh, I see a lot of people saying they don't have time, they don't have enough money, they don't feel they know enough. Okay, well, all of those things are are valid challenges, but they they all can be overcome. And the, what we're going to talk about today is the uh, financial freedom fast track, and that's powered by Jake Analytics, and that is what I'm going to show you today and the charts we're going to go through today. So there are five keys to success. Excuse me one sec, we're just going to fix something here on our end. Put that on you right there. The green. Okay. Sorry about that. There's five keys to success. And we're going to go through each of these five today. And I'm going to give you examples, as I said earlier, from my portfolio. So the first is to rely on a methodology that you trust. Uh, this is the Jacob Power Gauge Rating, which is a very simple but not simplistic gauge that looks at the 
factors affecting the stock price and then gives it a rating on where it thinks the potential is for this stock from a very bullish to a very bearish rating. So you can see here it's very simple, but what's underneath the hood <laughs> is not simple at all. It's very complex, actually. Uh, the power gauge rating is the culmination of Mark Chaikin's 45 years on Wall Street, where he created indicators and technical indicators. I know a lot of you are technical traders. You're familiar with the uh, Chaikin oscillator, the Chaikin money flow. He created those tools for professionals all of his career, and after retirement, um, and after seeing the 2008 meltdown and how so many people like myself had been affected in a wrong way, he said, I'm going to create the same tools for individuals that I've done for professionals, but I'm do going to create them in a way that individuals can understand them. So in other words, they're very simple displays. So here's basically what, what he did. And this was all, you know, a, a outgrowth of the, of the 2008 meltdown. So the, there are four basic components, and these each convey a different trading style. For instance, Warren Buffett would depend on the financial metrics uh, heavily. Uh, Jim Cramer would trade using the earnings performance. He feels those are very important factors. So there are four of these components, each of which then is made up of five factors. So there's a total of 20 factors in this model. And as you can see here, I've laid them all out here. You can drill down uh, from the power gauge and get a, a rating on any of the 20 factors. Uh, for me, that is information overload. So I just depend on the ones you see here in red, plus the overall rating. So I feel price to sales is very important, particularly today when there's so many overvalued stocks, you know, like Yelp and Green Mountain Co Coffee, which we're going to look at. Expert opinions are very important. Uh, meaningful in that the short traders are considered the smartest guys on Wall Street. So if they're shorting the stock, they think that stock's going to go down, and that's not a stock I want to be in, right? And insider activity. You know, insiders typically know more about a company than you or I because they're working in that company, and they get the inside track. So those are the three components other than the overall rating that I use. Now, to validate even further the, uh, the effectiveness of the rating. NASDAQ asked us to create indexes based on the power gauge rating, and we did that by overlaying the power gauge rating on the stocks within their large cap, small cap, and dividend achiever funds. And after a year of performance, the power gauge ratings, uh, the power indexes, uh, outperformed their benchmarks by anywhere from 49% to 77%. And they're still outperforming. So uh, you know, that, is, that is really very strong validation for the efficacy of the power gauge rating. In addition to that, uh, Chaikin is, is quoted and seen on all of the major media channels and trade channels. So we get a lot of testimonials. You know, this is uh, from Cheryl. You know, Cheryl is a teacher out in California. She's an individual investor and trader. There's not enough time in my day to do the work Chaikin puts before me in minutes. I am wowed, and yes, you can quote me. I say to people, we're in a new economy today, and the economy is time because nobody has enough time. I mean, does this all make sense to you? So there's the Chaikin power gauge rating. That is the first um, step, is to use the Chaikin power gauge rating. The second is to play defense, and I put this today ahead of the playing offense because of all of the volatility and the down market that we've been experiencing. So what is a classic bear? The way we des describe a classic bear is to have these four components, and I'm going to go through these on, on the chart. The example uh, which is shown here is, is Yelp. Uh, but the power gauge rating has to be bearish, and that's this ribbon along the bottom of the chart. The price trending down. Uh, relative performance, this is this heat map here, uh, this red, in the case of Yelp, it's this red heat map. This uh, is weak. And the money flow uh, has money going out instead of coming in. So when do I know to sell? Well, I'm going to take you through the, the next chart 
and show it on there to make it a little bit clearer. But here is Green Mountain Coffee. Now this is a classic bear. This is in our system what we would call a classic bear. It has a persistent bearish shaken power gauge rating, as you can see along here. It has a persistent negative relative strength, which means the stock is performing under the S&P 500, so it's underperforming the market. And there's money coming out of this. Now, this money flow, as many of you are aware of the Chaikin money flow, because it's on most uh, trading packages that are sold worldwide, but this is a indicator that Mark Chaikin created over 30 some years ago, and it measures the flow in and out of the market by the professionals. So if professionals are selling, that's not a good sign, and that can lead very frequently to a lower price, as you can see it's done here with Green Mountain. You know, on the reverse side, if there's money coming in, the institutions are buying it, and that tends to bump up the price, and you can see that correlate right here. These little red uh, triangles are sell signals. I'm going to get into that as step five, but look for those on these charts along the way. And I said I, I have some criteria of how I know when to sell. Um, this stock I don't happen to own because I don't, I, don't, I don't own any uh, bearish stocks. Um, so this one isn't an example from my portfolio, but it tells the story beautifully. So it's trending down, obviously. This price is trending down. And this yellow kind of orange line here is a 200-day moving average. Well, one of the tip-offs that it may be time to get rid of a stock is if it falls below that point. The other tip-off is if it falls below these dot, dotted lines, which are volatility bands. Um, so if it dips down below that volatility band, like you see here, uh, that frequently um, is a good signal to say, hey, it's time to get out of this stock. Uh, this is not going in the right direction. So let's, uh, let's look at another example, uh, Whole Foods Market. Uh, now, these are stocks you know, that we all know about, right? I mean, Green Mountain, I love their coffee. I have a Carrick. Uh, Whole Foods is a great store to shop in. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean I would buy their stock. Um, you know, these, these stocks have not been performing well, so you can't just go with what you like. It has to be backed by, by fact, not, a, not emotion. I know people like to buy stocks that they know about and feel allegiance to, um, and that's fine, but they also have to have the right uh, fundamental and technicals underneath it. The, and the power gauge rating is here, as you can see. This is the, the uh, algorithm with the 20 factors. Um, by the way, this is 85% um, fundamental and 15% technical. So it's the only model that combines fundamentals with technicals. And that's why we feel it's so powerful and so predictive. The relative strength, as you can see on Whole Foods, has been uh, underperforming since uh, late April, early May, and there's money coming out. And you can see all of this by a correlating a downward trend in the price. And these nice little sell signals along the way that say, hey, you know, this might be a good time to get out of this stock. So Yelp here is our um, sad sack bear. It's been bearish for a year. Uh, poor relative performance uh, relative to the market for almost a year and a pretty persistent pattern of money, institutional money coming out of this stock with one little blip here that just made it sideways before it's about to go down again. So, you know, this is, these are just kind of screaming at you with, um, I put an options trade on here is out of your portfolio if it's a stock that you that you own. Now, subscribe and us testimonials on the profits that they made. And just a few weeks ago, this fellow, Mike, uh, sent us this, um, and he sent us his trading account so picture of this story. But he he netted seventeen thousand four hundred eight dollars, and in only two weeks since he's been using the system. Uh, he said he had the bigger on, uh, which was based on Mark's bearish play of the week, which is a, a report Mark puts out a week he comes in, uh, and Alex subscriptions. He bought three different put options and risked $7,100, but he netted 17408 profit.
again a week, two weeks later about another trade that he made five thousand dollars. So th this money can be made, and this is all during this uh, this down market uh, that we're been experiencing in the last couple of months. So let's go on the positive side now. We've looked at how to play defense, how to avoid the losers, or play them to your advantage via options. Let's look at the offensive. You know, how do you identify a classic bull? Well, it's obviously the reverse. You know, you want the power gauge to be bullish. You want the price to be trending up. Uh, you want strong money flow and relative performance. You want to be green instead of red so that that stock is outperforming as opposed to underperforming. So is this all making sense? Can you all just chat yes into your chat box if this is relevant and you're understanding the difference? And let me just put up a slide of taking um, of a bullish stock. Okay, great, great. Paul, Anna, Brad, Wayne, awesome. Okay, great, awesome. Okay, that's great, that's great. Okay, so. Um, our goal of making this very visually appealing and easy to understand, I think, is being confirmed by you all, so thank you. So American Woodmark is a great example of a classic um, bull. It's up 64% this year. Now remember, this is in a market that's down 6%. The S&P 500 is down 6% year to date. American Woodmark, who's it's just probably a stock no one's ever heard of, is up 64%. Well, how did I know to buy this? How did I hear about it? You know, when the pros aren't buying this and uh, no one's ever heard of this. Well, one of our steps, which I'm going to get to, is to use industry groups to identify the, strong, the strongest groups with the strongest potential. So I'll get into that, but when I was looking at this stock, it, it, was in, it is in home furnishings, appliance, industry group. And that has been one of the strongest industry groups for absolutely, actually the last couple of years. So I'd been watching this stock for a while and just waiting for the right time to get into it. And I bought it on April 16th up here in like 52, I think it was. And then it had the, and it had this nice, uh, you can see this little triangle right here. Uh, and that gave me kind of the catalyst to, to make the buy because I got this buy signal, this relative strength buy signal. And you can see how strong this stock has been and still is. You know, it has a strong period of uh, power gauge rating, bullish. Um, it's actually very bullish, not just bullish. Relative strength is strong. And this money is, for the most part, uh, coming in. There's small areas of coming out, but um, that's typical in any stock. There are always are going to be some periods of, of distribution. Uh, the other uh, indicator I'm going to explain on here is this overbought, oversold, and this really helps with the timing. You know, how do you know when is the best time to get in and out of a stock? Well, no stock goes straight up. I mean, this orange line is just a moving 200-day moving average. It's not reality. You know, the reality is it goes up, it goes sideways, it goes up, it goes down a little bit, sideways, up again, and it, you know, I call it zig zig zigzagging. Well, you want to buy this stock when it's down in one of these troughs like this and you want to sell the stock when it's you know peaking up because that's where it's coming up at a high price and this can this is really helping and helpful to me in buying the stock so back in April this you know this was down you know so I knew this was a good time to buy it everything else was green and going in its favor and I got a buy signal so I've been watching this for couple of months so I um, I bought the stock here and then I you know went a little bit sideways here which correlates here to this uh, negative money flow and then it starts popping up again and then they reported earnings and it popped up I really like to uh, buy stocks on spikes particularly after earnings so this popped up right after it reported earnings. It popped up, I think, 9 or 10%. And I thought, boy, that's a great time. I'm just going to take my profit and get out of this stock. And that's what I did. So I sold it up here pretty much at its high. And I made 25% in four months or over $3,800. So that was, that was a nice trade. 
but this is all doable. You know, this isn't me being brilliant. This is just following a plan and identifying, you know, having the conviction to stick with the plan and do what the plan, let the, let the plan guide me. Uh, Elbit Systems, uh, this is another uh, stock that I recently uh, bought and sold. It's in the aerospace defense um, industry group, and you can see that right here. Uh, this now has a neutral power gauge, but I don't own this anymore. But I bought it right about in here. And the reason I bought it is because this also was a strong industry group at the time. And this had everything going for it. It, has, it had a green power gauge rating, green relative strength, and green money. And, and it was dipping down. So it, it met all my criteria. And at the time, it was very bullish. And at the time, those three criteria that I uh, pointed out earlier, the uh, price to sales, the insider buying, and the short interest were all uh, strong. So it had everything in its favor. So I bought it in May at 79. Uh, I got a money flow buy signal right in here. I had been watching it, so I thought, okay, this is a good time to buy it. So I um, bought it at 79, and then on, we were on vacation in uh, in August, and it spiked up to 85. And if you recall, one of one of the um, indicators I said works for when to sell is when it bumps up into that higher volatility band. That tends to mean it's bumping up to its maximum, and it's a good time to take your profit. So knowing things were getting a little shaky in, in August, I took the profit here and sold it up here at 85. And you can see since the stock has pulled back a little bit, um, the neutral power gauge rating in itself is not enough to make me want to sell. Um, but if that's combined with some other things like, you know, the money flow is kind of evening out, turned a little bit negative here, it wasn't very robust, um, and it bumping up against that volatility band said, this is, this is a great time to get out. So um, with this stock, I made 8% in three months, but, you know, that's still better than the market, and this stock is up 31% year to date. So that's how I use it to find the, uh, the classic bulls and, and why. Now, this um, woman, Martha, when she first started using the system, uh, the CNC was, a, was featured in the Market Insights. That's the report that we put out every Sunday uh, that has a commentary on what's happened this past week, uh, what Mark Chaikin sees in the upcoming week, and he always includes specific uh, stock ideas um, and features one in particular, which was at the time CNC, Centene. So Martha bought it, and she made $4,000 on a simple call trade. Thank you. Your system is so easy to understand. So that's our goal, is to make this easy um, and make this so that, that any investor uh, can, can grasp it and master the, master the methodology. Now, Anne has a little bit different story because Anne is a lawyer. She's out on the West Coast. She was really skeptical when she started first investing, and that was back in 2003, in December, when um, we just had launched the analytics uh, platform. And or in 2012, we launched the analytics, and she was using it, and she, you know, I, I corresponded with her, and she said, boy, I don't know why you got, you know, bearish rating on, on my beloved GE. You know, I love this stock. And I remember saying, you know, Ann, you know, there really are no beloved stocks. If, if the stock is doing well and it's bullish and it has strong relative strength and strong money flow, then you, then you can love it. But if it has a bearish rating and poor relative strength and or poor shake in money flow, then, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> It doesn't matter if you like this stock or not. It's not a good investment, and you should get out of it. So she took that to heart, and she sold it, and she's been a believer ever since, and now she you know, trades and invests using the methodology, and she's was paid back more than 11 times in that first year when she started using the system. So I said industry groups, and finding strong stocks in strong industry groups was one of the, um, the key uh, um, 
part of our, of our methodology. Well, I often talk about industry groups, but today I thought I'd talk about ETFs because ETFs are another great way to identify strong stocks um, and, strong, and strong ETFs. Now, some people just want to invest in ETFs. I mean, how many of you uh, invest in ETFs? If you can just check, type uh, yes into your chat box and I'll see how many of you are investing in ETFs. Okay, Rocky does, Anna, WL, Jerry. Okay, so we've got some ETF investors in our, in our midst, which is great. Okay, well, you're going to love this because the system is list-based. Uh, you have these user lists here, which are like my stocks and stocks that I'm watching, and then you, we have some pre-populated lists, including uh, ETFs. So you can drill down on this uh, list, which is a, uh, it ranks them high to low based on power gauge rating. So let's go into the ETFs. We'll go into, into the spider sectors. And here we see in strongest to, to weakest um, stock, uh, ETFs with the strongest stocks, meaning the most uh, ratio of bearish, uh, bullish to bearish, are ranked at the top. Consumer staples, consumer discretionary, healthcare, these have all been strong for a long time, financial. And these mirror the industry groups because they're actually made up of uh, industry groups that are uh, comprise these these ETFs. So for instance, let's look, let's drill down on the consumer discretionary. So consumer discretionary has industry groups like apparel, autos, retailing. So it has a number of industry groups, so you're not limited to one industry group, but you can also not be limited to any one stock, but look at the strongest stocks in that group. So I'm not an ETF buyer because in any ETF there's going to be neutral rated stocks and most likely uh, bearish rated stocks and I don't want to own those. I just want to own bullish stocks and certainly when I'm buying them I want them to be very bullish. So. Uh, here you go. Here's a drill down on the stocks that make up that subsector, the consumer discretionary. And again, they start in high-low sequence, high to low, based on the power grade trading. So the very bullish rise to the top. Up, as you can see, there's three very bullish stocks in this consumer discretionary group. So these are what I would then drill down on and research and think about if I'm going to be, if I'm shopping to buy a stock. So I've, re I've immediately taken the universe of 5,000 stocks and condensed it into three possibilities, three stocks. Uh, Best Buy is one of them. Now let's look at Best Buy. Okay, it was neutral recently. It was underperforming the market and the money flow is out. But look what happens when these things start lining up. And this is the magic of the system. This is where the system really shines and can really help you. Because once the power gauge turned bullish and the relative strength kicked in, and now you see there's a weeny bit of uh, money flow starting to come back in. Look what's happening to the price. You know, it's going up from, this is probably about 28, 25, 28, and it's now up at, what, 37, 38. So, um, you know, th these, this is, this is the way, this is the beauty of this system, is that you can, you can get in now on a stock like this, and what did that take me, maybe two minutes to find this stock? And let's go to the next one, uh, D.H. Horton. It's in the construction and building services um, industry group, and it's probably something that no one's ever heard of. I mean, I've never heard of it. But it has a strong power gauge rating, relative strength kicked in, and money flow. And look what happened here, end of July, early August. When those three indicators line up, uh, that stock tends to really take off. And you can see it burst up here. I mean, everything tended to pull back recently. Uh, but now it's going back up again, and it recently triggered a relative strength buy signal right in here. 
So this is how powerful this can be, and this is this is how you can use it to find winning stocks, uh, particularly stocks you've never heard of. I heard uh, the gentleman just before me was talking about some of the the myths of Wall Street, and one of them was to buy stocks that were in the news, and you know that's you know he said that's a real myth. That's a that can be a, a mistake, and and I would agree with that because stocks that are in the news. Um, are already written up. You know, they've already had their ride. They're popular, so there's more demand for them. Thus, the price is higher. Tends to be higher. So, you know, the the, the secret is to get in on these stocks like D. H. Horton, like American Woodmark, uh, like Best Buy. You know, before they start, uh, before you start reading about them in Barons, Barons, because by then, it's a little late. <laughs> So, you know, here's another happy subscriber. She started out with $350 in July, uh, and by following the, the Market Insights, which is the Sunday report, she's now at $3,666. $3, I mean, imagine that. I mean, would you like to take your account from $350 to $3,600 in less than two months? I mean, type yes if um, if that sounds intriguing to you, because it's in it's within your framework to make this happen. Okay, Rocky, yes, lots of love. <laughs> yes, Anna, Brad, yes, yes, yes. Yep. Okay, awesome. This is great. Okay, so um, I told you I told you tell you about signals. We've been talking about signals. Um, throughout the, the um, presentation, so I'm not going to dwell on this uh, for long because we have a, a truncated presentation um, and I want to you know, be timely and uh, be able to finish by, by five. Um, but the system has six pairs of buy-sell signals and I've shown you the little um, triangles that have been triggering on the slides that I've been showing you. So uh, they're terrific uh, guides to help you time when to get in or when to get out of a stock. But how do you know? How do you know? How do you find them? Well, I told you our system is list-based. So you know, here's um, a view of my watch list. These are stocks that I'm watching. Uh, I put American Woodmark back on after I sold it. Here's Best Buy. Um, so how do I know when any of these have triggered a sell signal or a buy signal? Well, this alerts view, which is this overlay here, uh, does it for me. So every morning, as part of my 15-minute uh, a day routine, I go onto my watch list as well as my stock list. I have two separate lists, and I overlay this bell, and it tells me uh, if there's any signals that have triggered. So in this case, Humana has triggered a relative strength buy. Um, Mohawk, I think that's in appliances. Uh, that's a re relative strength buy, Regeneronic, et cetera. It also tells me other things that uh, important changes that can affect the price of a stock, like an estimate revision here for Celgene. Uh, Expedia, it's telling me this price is trending up. It's crossed over that long-term trend line. Remember that orange line I said that when it crosses over it, uh, that might be a good time to buy. When it crosses under it, it might be a good time to sell it. Well, it's telling me it's crossing up over it, so you might want to look at this. Uh, this is apparel, this G, uh, G3, and this is also telling me this is now rated a bullish and the price is crossing over. So these really are helpful. It's also telling me on the sell side, you know, these and XPI and Amgen are breaking down. They have sell signals. Uh, they were both down over 1% today, so you can use these to help you short. I take advantage of the downside risk on a stock. Um, so that's how I use the signals. Now, I told you in the beginning that I found the two highest growth stocks of 2014. And these were all talked about in early January by the Wall Street Journal and by Barron's and by CNBC, et cetera. These, are the, these were the two highest growth stocks uh, last year. And I owned them both, and I bought them early on. So how did I know how to do that? Well, let's look at Southwest Air quickly. Uh, that went up 126% last year. However, it's down 12% this year, this year to date. 
and so it's underperforming the market by double. S&P is down 6%. Southwest is down 12%. So how did I know? How did I know when to get out? And how did I know when to get in? Well, I got in earlier than this chart because uh, this chart I'm only showing you a, a one-year view. We have a five-year view here, but it's very truncated. So. I'm only showing you the one-year view, but I bought it back in here in June at like 25, or after the whole Ebola scare in October of last year when everything dipped. But I had the conviction to buy more because the power gauge stayed strong and relative strength stayed strong. So I said, there's not a thing wrong with this stock, although it took a really hard hit. But I said, let me use this to my advantage and buy more because I see that this still has very strong potential and the power gauge is still strong. So I bought more in here. Um, I wrote it up, 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 and then it started to level off around March, April. Power gauge turned neutral. I start to watch things pretty carefully when the power gauge turned neutral. And then when you have these other indicators, and these are really important indicators, this relative strength and money flow. And when those two kick in and turn negative, uh, then that's a really powerful signal to say, hey, it's time to leave the party. So I had sold some here when the power gauge had turned neutral and the money flow started to turn negative. So I sold some in here and I sold the balance in here when I got this um, relative strain sell signal. So I, I sold these both at around, I think it was around 46 and 41. Uh, stock is now down at, at 38. It's down 12% this year, but I mean, look at the ride it took down that I avoided all that pain thanks to these indicators saying, hey, you know, time to leave the party. Take your profit and get out. So, so I did. I mean, I made a lot of money on this. We went to Turkey for two years last year from the proceeds from this one stock alone. So hey, Sam, that was a really uh, big win. Quick heads up. You're looking at about three, three and a half minutes. Okay. Thank you, Reed. All right, so Skyworks is another one, uh, a similar story. You know, uh, bought it before it took off, when the system started to, uh, when, when the power gauge turned bearish in this case, that's when I sold it and got out before it went down further. And now it just triggered, for those of you who own this stock, they supply chips to Apple, it's down again today. So let's uh, quickly recap these five steps. You know, these are, the, these are what you want to write down. You know, you want to follow a proven methodology. You've got to have a plan. You want to play defense to get those losers out of your portfolio before they tank. You want to play offense so that you can find the winners and get them into your portfolio before they take off. Use groups or ETF strength to identify the strong candidates and the strongest groups and use the signals to help tell you when to buy or sell. And then, you know, take it to the bank. <laughs> Reward yourself, take a vacation, reinvest it in your uh, retirement accounts, you know, or give it, give some to charity. Um, but enjoy it. I um, mean, you know, another testimonial, uh, Rex paid for two months in Hawaii thanks to um, an Amazon trade where he made a great profit. Uh, Annie, a good friend of mine, uh, made 15% on the Mylan. So, a lot of success stories, but we want you to be our next success story, and we want you to enjoy these kind of profits and be able to enjoy the benefits of the profits by you know, taking nice vacations and doing things that you want to do and spending time doing what you do. So we're going to offer a, a financial freedom fast track package, and this includes the software that I've been talking about. It saves you time. It's done for you. It's reliable. We'll give you the freedom to do what you want to do. What this is not for are, uh, as the speaker said before me, it's not for uh, someone who's looking to get rich quick or make a quick buck. You know, this is uh, it's not for day traders. It's not intended for in and out on a day. It's, in, it's intended for investors who are serious about their money, traders who are serious about their money, and who want to invest a little bit of time and effort and will reap the rewards. So the retail value of Chaikin Analytics for one year is $1,950. We are including in that 
what we call done for you research. These are the market insights, the stock ideas that I was telling you about. These retail for $495. What's most important to us is that you get up and running fast and start making money fast. So we get you on coaching calls. As you, when you subscribe, you will be scheduled on these uh, coaching calls. Uh, and these are small groups. Now we also are going to get you on a one-on-one -on -one coaching calls to get you into the market ASAP. And these are retail value at almost $600. And you'll also be part of our insiders community. You know, get Be a part of other subscribers who are doing what you're doing, who are finding winners and avoiding losers. And these are our bi-weekly online forums. So all of this has a retail value of $5,644. Um, you know, if all this did for you was to get you that one trade like I did recently on American Woodmark where I made $3,800, I mean, you know, would that be worth it? Um, probably yes. Um, so this is all $1,950, but we're going to add our guarantee, money back guarantee if you're not satisfied for seven days after you've been had your coaching sessions. If you're not satisfied, if you're not feeling like you're going to make money, you can return it. Um, and we're going to throw in a couple of more bonuses. You, know, you will have access. We will give you the phone number of our success consultants whose only job are to make sure you are successful. So they are available to you. Uh, we'll make you, uh, you, you'll get on the email list for our Morning Insights, which is our market uh, strategist daily uh, letter where he analyzes the markets, the overnight markets, the futures, what he sees happening in the coming day with specific stock ideas. And for the first 10 people who subscribe, you'll get a personal call with me where I'm happy to go over your portfolio and share with you some ideas of what has worked for me. So all of this uh, boils down to $8,444. Um, are you worth investment? Take action now. Uh, start making money now. You know, the time is now, particularly in this volatile market. Uh, don't wait another week. Just start making money now. And rather than $19,050, if you take action now and subscribe by tonight at midnight, we'll take another $300 off. So your annual price will be reduced to $1,650. But you must take action tonight. Uh, here's our phone number. You can call us. We have our success agents on standby. Or you can just simply go online with this URL and subscribe that way.